Now that we've written the isForm valid function, let's go ahead and try it out. I'm going to head back to my app and we're going to import that function and then see if it's all working correctly. I am almost 100% confident this is working correctly because we wrote all those tests, but it's always good to go and just make sure it actually is working correctly. So let's go ahead and create a new computed property here. I'm going to call this one valid, or maybe form valid is a bit of a better name. I think that's a little bit more uh, clear. It is going to be a computed property again, and we're just going to pass in the validated form and then see if that is valid or not. So I'm going to put it down below this one. I'm going to go ahead here and return is form valid, and we're going to pass in our validated form, which we have up here in the validated status function. So I'm going to say validated status, and then we're going to grab the value in here and pass that one in. We could actually pass this entire thing in, but then we'd have to update the is form valid function to expect this value key, which is not really good. I don't really want to mix my view UI part or the, the reactivity system of view, which is this value key here with my business logic, which is why I'm doing it this way. Anyway, let's go ahead and return this and see if it's all working correctly. I'm going to just do a little simple log to see if this is working correctly down here. So I'm going to use string interpolation again. Let's just make another entire key actually. I'm actually going to put it under here, the form valid. And just to show you what I did, because I moved a little bit quickly there, I have form valid here, head back down to the bottom. I've created that new function here and I'm just returning it from my setup function to make it available on the template. Let's go ahead and save it and see what happens. Head back to my browser and we have this false key down here, which is exactly what I expected. If I go ahead and make this true, it is now going to work correctly and that is true. Let's make sure it's actually working correctly. I'm going to make this one 30 or 40. Uh, it's going to be false. Now it is true, and if I change the pounds, this is now going to be false, so that is all working correctly. The next thing we're going to do is actually add a button to this form and then bind to the, the variable we just created, the form valid variable. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to jump in here and create a new button. We're going to give it a type of submit because it's going to be a submit button, and then we're going to bind the disabled, and then we're just going to say, if not, form valid. And if everything is working correctly, it's going to disable this when the form is not valid, and I'm just going to say submit on that. Let's go ahead and see if this is working. Head back to the browser now, and this should be disabled, and so it is. If I was to make this valid though, by making it 100, it is going to be able to be submitted. So everything is now working correctly. And that actually brings us to the end of our features. We've implemented everything we set out to achieve, and it's all working correctly, mostly because we wrote lots of tests along the way. There is one set of tests we haven't actually written yet, and that is some UI tests using view test utils, and that is how we're going to finish up in the next lecture.